There's nothing like sitting through a really bad movie. There's nothing more grueling, more painful, more emotionally and mentally taxing than sitting through a movie that you just know is not doing what it sets out to do. When you watch a movie and you pick apart in every individual scene, understanding the point of what the film is trying to get across, and it just can't do it. It just cannot achieve what it sets out to do. It's a really, really taxing, taxing experience, and it really, really grates on the nerves the more and more you watch that very movie. And Fantastic Four is one of those movies. So hello everyone, I am Zazubar, and today I'm here to do a off-the-cuff, non-spoiler review of a movie that just came out in the movie theater. Uh, don't do this that often. I only like to do it for movies that really make an impact on me. And I figured that this movie would be one of those movies to do it for, because it had an impact on me. So, yeah, let's talk about Fantastic Four for a second, shall we? So, uh... I had very little interest in this movie. Uh, initially from the trailers, I didn't really know what to make of it. Um, it looked interesting, to say the least. It looked like it had an idea for how to do the Fantastic Four in a different but still interesting way. It wanted to play it as a dark science fiction film, which I think is a great idea for Fantastic Four. And I really really love that initial teaser trailer. I think it's a great, great teaser. And it really set up that, hey, we're going to do Fantastic Four as a dark science fiction film. And I looked at that trailer and I went, god damn, they're selling me on this idea. And through the the, tra the trailers following it and the, the fan backlash for a lot of the things they were doing and a lot of the ideas they were going to do, um, I still tried to remain somewhat optimistic for the potential of a dark science fiction Fantastic Four reboot. Um, despite the fact that it was still Fox and the Marvel wasn't doing it, um, you know, despite that Victor Von Doom was going to be Victor Damashev, despite the, the fact that the Fantastic Four were going to be essentially children, um, despite the fact that the thing wasn't going to have any pants or presumably a thing, if you know what I mean, uh, I tried to remain optimistic for this one, um, but up until this past week, it got more and more difficult, and up to the final day when the movie came out, it became nearly impossible. Everything I heard about this movie going in made it just sound like a complete train wreck, and I don't like to go into movies with that point of view. Um, I have before. I think the closest example of this that I have recently is Terminator Genesis. I heard nothing but bad things about that movie going into it. Well, not nothing but bad things. I heard some good things. But most of the general consensus with that was that Terminator Genesis was going to be a piece of shit. And I went into it with the mindset of, like, this movie is going to suck. Just got to own the fact that it's going to suck. And I really enjoyed Terminator Genesis, if you want to go ahead and watch my, uh, mine, Dylan, and Andres' spoiler review of Terminator Genesis for more details on to why, you can go ahead and, uh, go find that on my channel. But, I just wanted to say that I've d that this has happened before, where I've gone into a movie and really expected to just hate it and, and n kind of know that it was going to be bad, and come out going, I enjoyed that, and Terminator Genesis being a recent example of that. And I think that was the last movie I saw in theaters. No, I saw Ant-Man. No, my bad. Uh, Ant-Man I saw in between Terminator and uh, and Fantastic Four. So, um, it's But it was a recent movie experience that I had on my mind going into this one because similar situation, heard nothing but crap going into it. So I expected to hate it, but at the same time, having seen Genesis, I was like, you know, maybe I'll enjoy this. Maybe I'll find something in it that nobody else has. And like I did with Terminator Genesis. And... Going into it with that expectation, and then finally watching the movie, I have to say, completely different situation. Because Terminator Genesis, the reviews that I had heard for it, mainly said that the movie was really painfully mediocre, and that the story didn't really make much sense, and that most of it was very derivative of the previous Terminator films, but didn't have any of the any of the good qualities 
of what those movies brought to the table. And I disagreed with a lot of that, though I did agree with it to a certain extent with Genesis. Um, but most of the people who were reviewing Terminator Genesis were still saying that, you know, it's watchable. Uh, it's still, it still feels like a, mov a movie. And that despite the fact that a lot of it doesn't work, it's not the worst thing ever. Listening and reading and watching reviews of Fantastic Four didn't really get that much of a sense from it. A lot of the people who were reviewing it were really, they seemed physically ill at the, at the word of this film, at the sheer thought of Fantastic Four. So, completely different situation. But I didn't really realize that going into it, and it's only upon watching the movie that I really understand that sense of physical pain at the thought of this movie. So, let's stop talking about other people's opinions, shall we? Let's just talk about my own personal take on Fantastic Four, because that's all I can offer you guys whenever I do a review. So, I wanted to open with that, though, because my experience was heavily influenced by other people's opinions, and that's not really ever a good thing when you watch a movie, you really want to go in as a clean slate and just let the movie do what it wants to do to you. That's the idea. Um, as creepy and vaguely sexual as that sounds, that's what you want when you go into a movie. Is you basically want the movie to have the effect on you that it set out to have an effect on you, and that's more difficult when you either know what that effect is going to be or if you know if that effect works or not. And this is one of those movies where um, I, I didn't I didn't have that going in. I didn't go into it really with a clean slate of like, I'm just going to let this movie do whatever it tries to do to me. Um, I really tried to. Um, really, really tried to, but it was just impossible. Just because everything I heard about this movie just made me not want to give it a chance, but I still kind of tried, I still gave it a shot, I still said, alright movie, let's see what you got, and the answer was very little to none, um, so, Fantastic Four, does it work? No, nah, not at all, wow, I really hated this movie, and I don't anymore like to watch a movie like this and then talk about it afterwards and really, really get angry at it because I just can't do it anymore. Um, I don't like to do that because, you know, I've gotten older and I've gotten more kind of like, well, it's just a movie, so you can't really get that angry at it. It's just a movie. Just either enjoy it or don't. Um, especially with movies where some people like it and some people don't. With Fantastic Four, though, I haven't heard anybody who likes this. So if you do, if you did enjoy Fantastic Four, and you don't want to hear somebody hate it, get out of here now because that's what this review is going to be—me hating on it. And if you haven't seen Fantastic Four yet, and you're interested in it, and you think that you might enjoy it, I can't tell you to give it a shot. I just can't. I was about to, but I can't do it. It's just all right. So, I'm going to try and do this non-spoiler. Not that it matters. There's really nothing to spoil in this movie with the possible exception of a few things. So, those few things that may or may not be considered spoilers, despite the fact that this movie really has nothing going on in it that would spoil the experience for you, uh, regardless of what the movie already spoils for itself, um, I'll, I, I will leave those things out of this review and maybe I'll mention them on a podcast down the line. But, uh, in terms of my thoughts on this movie, let's go. So, alright, as a dark science fiction film, which is where I thought this movie was going to try and land, and the most interesting aspect of it, given the trailers, um, let's start there. Does it work as a science fiction movie? Not really. It tries to, and it kind of, sort of, gets there initially. Um, I feel like this movie knows how to how good science fiction movies work. It's clearly trying to be a movie about exploring the unknown. And with the Fantastic Four, that's pretty perfect. They're one of the best science fiction properties that Marvel has under its belt. And I've always enjoyed that about the Fantastic Four. I'm not the biggest fan of them. Um, I haven't read a great deal of them in the comics. I watched the cartoons growing up. I watched all the movies and, you know... 
They're not brilliant. <laughs> Especially the Roger Corman one. But they all definitely have that sense of that sense of scientific exploration and that sense of probing the unknown and that sense of, well, should we probe the unknown? And what are the impacts of probing the unknown? What are the impacts of mankind trying to achieve a greater sense of power and knowledge in the universe than we were really when we were really meant to have from our initial place in the natural world. And that is very obviously what this movie is setting out to do. And I think that's brilliant to do that with the Fantastic Four. Because again, that's the whole premise of their original creation was that you've got these people who are trying to discover something and trying to explore something that humanity doesn't understand. And then they kind of pay for it. They are they, they explore it. And they get these powers from it, and they have to learn how to use them for the proper thing. And they have to learn how to live with these new powers. And I thought that was a really interesting thing to do with the Fantastic Four. And this movie doesn't do it properly. And again, it's got the right mindset. Josh Trank had the right idea with this one. He had the right sort of initial thrust to make a really interesting version of the Fantastic Four. But the problem is, it never, ever gets the chance to get to those ideas, to explore those ideas. There are moments where those ideas are sort of still expressed and are still intriguing, but this movie is not a good exploration of those ideas, and as a re-adaptation of the Fantastic Four, bringing those characters to the film medium, doing something different with them, and relating them to this theme, it completely fails. And the reason why is because the movie can't decide what it wants to do with these characters. It wants to put them into certain places, it wants them to be certain people, and it wants them to take away certain things from this experience. But it can't decide who they are, what their motivations are, and how exactly to relate them to this situation. And I don't think I don't think it really makes an attempt or even really strongly works to get the audience to get behind these people and sort of get into their heads and understand who they are and why they are the way they are. Again, I feel like it wants to, and I see the nuggets of that attempted here, especially with Reed Richards. The movie makes a really, really good attempt to try and make Reed Richards a really interesting character. And I think Miles Teller does the most work out of anybody to try and get Josh Trank's original vision for these characters onto the screen. But I just don't think that the movie ever gets the chance to really explore those characters and do anything interesting with them because it's just a mess. It's just it's a horrendously edited, uh, chopped up piece of crap put in theaters because, well, we made a Fantastic Four movie, we have to release it. I'm not going to comment on the the behind-the-scenes stuff that's been going on with this movie because I don't know anything more than other reviewers and video bloggers who have talked about it, and I can't really comment on it in any way that they haven't already. If you want to watch a really interesting video that gets into what may or may not have happened behind the scenes of this movie, because it is certainly interesting, go ahead and jump over to Mr. Sunday Movies' channel here on YouTube, and he did a really interesting video called Fantastic Four, What Went Wrong, where he tries to discover who is to blame and what happened that produced this, because this is just abysmal, and it's abysmal in a way that I haven't seen in a movie in a long time. Movies don't really get made like this anymore and then get put in theaters in a wide theatrical release. Just studios know better now. They know that people know their shit. They, they can't hide behind a piece of crap movie and expect to get away with it because people are too smart these days. The internet and, and, and the way that we receive information now about movies just does not allow you to take a really, really bad movie and then change it or market it in any way and release it in theaters and expect to turn a profit or get a positive reception from it. You just can't do it anymore. And if you can, well, then you're really smart and you deserve to have that happen for you because 
it's just impossible to do nowadays. You have to make something that you're able to stand behind in some regard. And Fox or Josh Trank were not willing to do that with this movie. And I think that in that regard, they are to blame. Because, I, you know, I feel bad for the two of them in some respect because... I don't think either of them wanted to set out to make a really, really bad movie, a really incomprehensible, just mess of a movie that just is an embarrassment for everyone involved, because that's what happened. But obviously they didn't set out to do that, because otherwise it wouldn't have happened in the first place. Josh Trank wouldn't have disagreed with the studio, the studio would have disagreed with Josh Trank. And we would have gotten something more watchable than this piece of crap. Um, because as it stands right now, I'll go as far to say I think this movie is unwatchable. It doesn't make a lick of sense, and, um, it's just a slog to get through. Sitting there in the theater, it just, it just physically hurt to watch it. I almost walked out a few times, um, because I just didn't care. Um, this movie doesn't make you care about its characters. Again, it tries to, but it just doesn't get the chance to, to really make you care about them. Um, I feel like the, the... You know, as a superhero movie and as somebody who loves that genre and can ver and can look past a lot of, you know, cliched or, or, uh, or subpar acting or script issues or anything... To really find something good in this genre, I couldn't do it with this one. Um, regardless of the fact that I found the, the the initial premise so interesting and found it so compelling, was that it just doesn't deserve it. It, it really doesn't. Um, if they don't care about the fact that this movie is an, incompre an incomprehensible mess and that everybody who watches it is way smarter than the way this movie tells its story and the way it's presented. Because for me... Initial ideas and motivation are definitely something to be considered when watching a movie, especially for me just because, you know, I go to film school and I, I know the at least somewhat of the creative process, uh, you know, and I, and, I, and I always like to give people the benefit of the doubt when they're trying to do something creative because I think, they do, I think that anybody who attempts to bring the vision in their head to life deserves a chance to see it done properly. And I like Josh Trank's vision, so I feel bad that the movie isn't what he set out to make, but at the same time, you know, it's still a really bad movie, and I feel bad for him, but I have to say that this is a bad movie because, I mean, not just bad, just, oh, just a absolute train wreck, just because it's what we got. Um, it, it's what was put in theaters, and, you know, I wish we saw something a little bit more interesting, something something more well-made, something comprehensible, but we didn't. It's a train wreck, and it and it's going to go, to, go down in history as a train wreck. And again, that's unfortunate, but that's the way it's going to have to go. And uh, let's, just get a, let's just get a little bit more into the details, because otherwise I'm going to have an aneurysm <laughs> while reviewing this movie, just because it's, it's, it's really maddening. Um, because... Again, I have not seen a movie this bad in theaters in a long time. I don't even think I could give you a movie that I, I hated as much as this one in the theater. I mean, I could try, but we'd be sitting here for too long anyway. Maybe Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance? Um, that was an absolute train wreck, and... Yeah, I think that one, maybe. Um, again, we don't really get this kind of a bad movie anymore. Just like this really incomprehensible, poorly edited, just mess because I don't I think studios are aware that they can't get away with it anymore. Um you can't just have a movie that's shot to shit and then edit it in a way that'll make it any better than what was shot because you just can't again you just can't do it anymore. Just can't get away with it. People know because there's on set photos, there's early screenings, there's, you know, Twitter and everything. You just can't get away with um, turning a bad movie into something watchable anymore. Um, uh, at least as easily as you could, you know, ten years ago, let's say. Um, and this movie attempts it, and it's really, really hilarious in some of the ways that it tries to come across as watchable, regardless of the fact that it isn't. And I say hilarious, and let's talk about hilariousness for a second, because... I feel like the one place where this movie worked in one or two scenes was comedy. And I really enjoyed Michael B. Jordan and 
uh, Miles Teller's performance. I enjoyed most of the cast. Um, I think most of the casting for this was was solid and in some cases brilliant. Um, I really liked Miles Teller as Reed Richards. There were one or two moments where I was watching him and I'm like, I kind of like this guy. I loved the scene where he... Johnny Storm and Victor Von Doom all got drunk. That was probably my favorite scene in the movie. It's got some of the best dialogue, it's got some of the best jokes, um, and it's definitely got the best chemistry between the actors. And I think even then, the one thing I didn't like about it was that Miles Teller's drunk performance was kind of awkward in that I felt like he was playing up too much that, hey, this is supposed to be the first time that Reed Richards gets drunk, isn't it? You know, he's a lightweight. Oh, he's all awkward and he's never been drunk before. Isn't it funny? And I'm like, it's kind of funny, but I think he was playing up too much the fact of like, oh, this is the first time this guy's gotten drunk because he's not a type of first, he's not the type of guy who gets drunk. And I'm like, I get that, but it still doesn't work. Um, in that way. I think some part of that scene does work again, but I feel like it didn't work in that sense that that it added anything to his character with that with that idea in mind. Um, but I did enjoy the scene. Um, I like the moment where he calls up Ben Grimm drunk, and I, again, I don't know if this is a spoiler. If it is, I don't care. Because <laughs> um, again, at the end of the day, I can't recommend this movie, so if I spoil it for anybody who cares to still see it, I'm sorry. Uh, but I just, I can't recommend it, so I'm, I'm just going to spoil whatever. Uh, except for the very end, I'll leave that ambiguous. But um, he calls up Ben Grimm drunk, and Ben's just sitting and laying in bed, just like, it's like 3 in the morning. He's like, Reed, why are you call me at 3 in the morning? And Reed's like, guys, we're going to go to space, man! Or to another dimension in this version. We're going to go to another dimension, man! It's going to be awesome, bro! Woo! Ben's like, all right. I like that. I like that a lot. And a lot of the attempts here to make the Fantastic Four younger characters and to make them young people of today, I kind of liked. I enjoyed that about it. But again, a lot of that is in the first half hour, and a lot of it does not work on a grand scale. I'm talking very individual type of scenes. You know how usually when you review a movie, or when you think about a movie and you pick out things you don't like about it, usually it comes off as nitpicking? Like, oh, I didn't like the fact that you know, this very specific thing happened in this very specific way, and that doesn't really make any sense. You know, I, I, nitpicking usually works for bad things, where it's like, in a generally good movie, you nitpick to try and find things you don't like about it, and it's really, really small ways that the movie doesn't really work. By and large, that's what happens. This movie, complete opposite. You have to nitpick to find things to like about it. I'm nitpicking when I say that, like, oh, I like the scene where Reed was drunk, because it's so short. Like, this scene lasts for maybe five minutes, but it just it just shows how much of a mess the rest of the movie is, because I was, like, holding on to that scene, just like, I like this scene, please don't stop, because the rest of the movie is so bad. Um... Just the rest of the dialogue is atrocious. Um, it's awkward. It's cringeworthy at almost in almost every scene, um, especially with Sue Storm. I feel bad for Kate Mara because her character is atrocious. I absolutely hate. I didn't hate her, but I just thought that her character was awkward and unlikable and um, and boring and just unfun. Just not fun to watch when her and Reed were on screen together. Ugh. It was just like, it's like watching your nerdy friend, and I say nerdy, but like, just like, your friend who doesn't know how to talk to girls, or anybody try to talk to a, to, to a girl, or anybody. Um, it's awkward and painful, and you want to jump in and try and help him, like, lighten the mood up, but it's, you just can't do it. You gotta let him die on his own. And I was watching Reed Richards and Sue Storm die a lot in this movie in that way. Um... So yeah, from a from an interpersonal relationship level, from an acting not not acting, but from a characterization level and from a delivery level, from a script writing level, I thought that this movie was just painfully awkward and cringeworthy in almost every scene where people are talking to each other. Um, with the exception of the scene where everyone's drunk, and I think that says something about it in and of itself that everybody had to be drunk for the movie to be fun or make any sense or work on a narrative level and on a dialogue level and on an entertainment level. Um because the rest of it just doesn't. Uh, and I'm not really sure how much else I want to get into because the rest of it is just... It's going to be me repeating myself in terms of train wreck, horrendous, awkward, cringeworthy, special effects, absolutely terrible. People are bitching about Jurassic World and Terminator Genesis' CGI. Uh-uh, this movie, man, 
just really, really shoddy CGI. The thing looked okay. It sold me on the idea of a CGI thing, which I wasn't for initially. I don't think, I still don't necessarily think you have to do the thing in CGI like you do for the Hulk nowadays. Um, I don't think that character just really requires the level of monstrousness and um, and, over, and kind of uh, overt, crazy strength that the Hulk needs. But um, I think this CGI thing worked in terms of it looked good he looked like the thing i i wasn't crazy about the thing's design i still not um but uh the cgi thing worked okay um he looked good in, relative to uh the other actors he looked like he was interacting with them not a problem at all thought that worked um by and large action sequences on the other hand absolutely atrocious um there were a couple moments in the middle where the thing was like throwing some tanks around that looked okay but to be fair that was happening on sm happening on small tv screens we see very little actual action in this movie there's really only one scene that i think you can qualify as a tried and true action scene and that's the very end the rest of it is just small little moments where like something vaguely action-oriented will happen. And I'm not even going to complain that this movie wasn't enough of an action movie. I mean, it was certainly more boring for that because the rest of it was so painful to watch, but I was okay with the idea of a mostly science fiction-driven Fantastic Four movie with only one big action sequence at the end. I thought that was totally fine. But the fact is that the rest of it doesn't work, so the fact that there's no action in there only makes things feel worse, because there's nothing to keep the audience interested, because the characters aren't working, the story's not working, nothing is working. But even then, the action doesn't work, because, you know, again, the CGI is, a, it's more very, you know, I said Jurassic World CGI was varied, this movie was, like, going through, like, a bargain bin at a Walmart, you know, like a DVD bargain bin, like, oh, it's like, hey, I found the original Terminator for two bucks, and oh, I found Sharktopus versus Terracuda for ten bucks, oh, it's that level of varied, like, I found a classic and I found a piece of shit, um, just really varied special effects, um, Again, the thing looks fine, Johnny Storm looks terrible as the Human Torch, uh, looks awful um he looked way better in the 2005 movie which is insane um but i don't know what happened with the human torch but he looks atrocious um and, and i think he looks bad in the second tim story fantastic four movie rise of the silver surfer but even then i think he looked better than he did in this movie the fire looks like it's out of a ps2 or early ps3 game and the actual Human Torch design, he he looks like he did in the Roger Corbin one, where he looked like just like a blank mannequin with fire, with bad CGI fire on top of him. That's what he looked like to me. And I had a lot of flashbacks to the to the Roger Corbin Fantastic Four movie. It was really weird. Like that movie only has like one major action set piece as well, and that's also the very end um, when they're fighting Doctor Doom. Um, really bizarre. Um, but uh, um. But yeah, the Invisible Girl, woman, whatever they would have called her in this, because they didn't call anybody by their names except for the thing in this. No superhero names, which, again, if this was a better dark science fiction film, would have been totally fine with that. But uh, because it didn't work on that level, I would have at least appreciated it if they would have give, found some way to give them their names. Now, again, not that it matters, the movie's a piece of shit, that wouldn't have made it any better. Certainly the fact that they call themselves the Fantastic Four didn't make things any better. I should probably talk about that at the end. So, last couple things about the special effects. Invisible Woman looked okay. We saw her invisible once, because that makes sense for a character who's called the Invisible Woman. It's defined by her invisibility, and it would have been interesting to explore how her invisibility relates to her character development, but... No such luck there. Again, not that it matters, because I didn't like her character regardless, so whatever. Ah, uh, Mr. Fantastic stretching. It looked, again, varied. Sometimes it looked good. Sometimes not so much. The first time you see it, oh my god, it looked bad. And it was horrible, too, because I liked what they were trying to do with it. I liked the fact of what they were trying to do with the, the the reveal of the powers it was it was very horror movie inspired and i thought that was a good idea especially for this type of movie but the problem is when you see 
Because it's like he's got like some like debris on top of his legs and he starts to pull himself out of the wreckage. And I'm like, oh, oh, he keeps going, but he didn't seem to pull his leg out. But, oh, because it's like his leg is stretched out. And I realized that like a minute before you see it. And then when you see it, it looks terrible. It just looks like a bad extension was put on his leg. It looked like he was walking on stilts. Like, it looked like his leg was not what was stretched out. It looked like there was like a piece of, like a prosthetic thing there that was stressed out, stretched out. And then he was like way up front in like the front of it. And like it wasn't his actual body. And for a horrific reveal like that, not what you want. You want the audience to go, oh my god, look at his leg. Didn't have that at all. What else should I get into? Uh, again, special effects wise, I'm trying to think if there's any other major thing. I would talk about Doctor Doom, but that'll probably make me go into a some sort of hallucinogenic rant about, you know, how this movie like bastardized that character and how it's hilarious how bad their interpretation of Doctor Doom is, um, because. It, Wow. Um, piece of shit. Um, but, uh, I don't know if I can even get into that. Because, uh, again, also, the other thing is that Doctor Doom is so little, has such a little part in this anyway, that it, it doesn't even matter that he's even in there. Um, but, yeah, he looks pretty bad. The design is atrocious. I'm not even talking about the design. I think we all agree that he looks terrible design from a design standpoint. He does look like the ultimate Doctor Doom, but just because something looks like something else from the comics doesn't make it a good idea. And and this was not a good idea. He just looks he just he looks like a like a fucked up mannequin. He looks like that mannequin from Terminator 2 that the that the T1000 stands next to in the mall scene, but like thrown into a junkyard and dragged through like piles of garbage and electrical wires and green paint and thrown like a he has like a a green jacket thrown on top of him um that was just terrible um but from a special effects standpoint i guess he didn't look that bad um it, he a lot of it was cg but i could tell there was some practical stuff in there as well and I, I liked that mix i thought the mix was fine um but again just from a design point it was so just from a design standpoint it was so terrible that i couldn't even like pay attention to the fact that eh, he doesn't look too bad um, I like the mix of CG and practical, so, um, and it's weird, too, because I think a lot of the CGI that does work works because of the work Fox has done with the Planet of the Apes reboot series. Um, there's a chimp in this movie that looks exactly like Baby Caesar from Rise of the Planet of the Apes, who gets, who's in this movie, gets sent to the negative zone, or Planet Zero, excuse me, first. Um, and, uh, I, uh, I, th I, th I thought that was funny, that he looked just like one of those apes. Um, I don't even know why they didn't get a real chimp. Uh, maybe they thought, like, oh, we do Planet of the Apes, and we get, like, you know, raving reviews because of how much, how good our CGI is, so let's just throw in one of those apes. But they could have used the real chimp. It's not like the chimp did anything. They put it in a machine, and then it went through the machine, and then it came back. And that was it. Um... It's not like it, like, exploded or anything. I don't know why they couldn't use the real champ. Um, but yeah, just special effects varied. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the fight scenes. So, there's one, there's a couple of laugh-out-loud moments. The, the whole last action scene is terrible. Um, it's a horrible, horrible superhero fight. And I don't even think the other Fantastic Four movies ever had a really good action set piece either. That last fight with Doom is also terrible in the first movie. Um, the, the one in the second movie, while it's hilariously bad in terms of how it doesn't make any sense, at least it looked kind of cool. Um... But, uh, this movie didn't have that. Uh, it, it looked, it looked bad. The, the actual choreography was atrocious. I get that these people aren't fighters, with the possible exception of Brent, of, uh, Ben Grimm. But, it just, it wasn't exciting, and I felt, it felt like it was trying to be, and I got no, and I wasn't invested enough in the characters to even care, to, to be able to look at that and go, well, the action's not that great, but at least the character stuff is good, um, in the action sequence. I couldn't even do that. I was so just bored. I was like, oh, maybe this movie will have some decent action. Didn't have that. Um, the action, the last action scene was just boring and laughably bad at some points and, um, made really bad use of the four's powers. Um, I think you could at least say about 
the Tim Story Fantastic Four movies that at least made some creative use of the Four's powers. Um, this movie, they're just super generic. Um, and, you know, I think you can make the argument that they're generic from the get-go, that the original idea from the comics um, was generic to, to, from the, to begin with. I don't necessarily agree, especially with Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman. And I don't, know, I don't think that any of them are that really that generic. Um, I mean, I get that controlling fire and stretching yourself out and turning yourself invisible and just being really strong are basic superpowers, but I feel like there are ways to play them off each other in, in, to be creative, and this movie didn't do that at all. Um, so, failed on that point as well. Um, what else can I cover? Oof. Um, I guess I'll just, the last thing I'll say, because this is really long now, and uh, I, I don't think this movie deserves any real more of my attention, is I'll talk about the ending, um, because, and I won't spoil anything, I'll, I'll just, I'll be vague, but let me just say, I haven't walked out of a movie since I saw the movie Push in 2009, not the book written by Sapphire that Precious was based on, no, I didn't, well, I didn't see that movie in theaters, and that, it's, it's a book that I read once, so, uh, I couldn't really walk out of that. Um, but I saw the, the the vague superhero movie with Chris Evans in it where he played a guy with telekinesis. Um, uh, and everybody had like weird, flashy powers. Uh, that movie. Walked out of that movie because it was fucking terrible. Um, and uh, that was the last movie I ever walked out of without sitting through the rest of the movie. And I almost did that with this one. I almost said to my friends, like, guys, let's go. This movie is not worth our time. But we paid for our tickets and we were like, fuck. Fuck it, we might as well sit through the rest of it. Um, one of our friends took an extended break. He was gone for a half hour, and he came back, and I was like, do you want me to tell you what happened? He's like, no. Um, so, uh, I, I, I guess, uh, I, I guess, you know, that, that tells you something as well about, about, uh, about the quality of this movie that he didn't even care to, to find out what he had missed. And this was, like, the last 15 minutes of the movie, so he didn't even care, like, why Doctor Doom was there or anything. Again, kind of spoilers for that, but anyway. Um... So, ending. Um, completely nonsensical. Uh, especially with the themes of the movie. I feel like if you're one of the people who were like, hey, you know, the movie is really bad, but at least some of the ideas are cool, then you must really hate the ending like I do because it, like, forgets about all of the themes. And the ones that it doesn't forget about, because there, there are a couple of lines that pretend like they're wrapping up the movie thematically, then, um... It, it comes off as so rushed and just so out of nowhere and really, really cartoony and f really unbelievable that it completely destroys any points the movie was trying to make about science or about how we look at science or about how the government reacts to scientific discoveries. Um, it completely destroyed all those points because it was just silly, really, really hackneyed, uh, just really bad, poorly written, um, is... The, is an understatement. Um, but then the ending ending proper. Uh, the naming of the characters as the Fantastic Four, I'll say. And again, I know that's a spoiler, but again, I don't care. Um, so the naming of the Fantastic Four is the first thing in a while that has made me walk out of a movie theater enraged and slam the doors of the theater to the point where ever, everybody in the theater was laughing that I had done so because I was so upset. And it's just because they just keep you on a knife edge for like two minutes while the fucking idiot characters on the screen are like, hey, we need a name. This is fantastic. Oh, we're f there's four of us. I know. Oh. I had to, I bolted out of the movie. And the movie did something at the end that ripped off another recent superhero movie with the name that I was like, Oh, fuck you. Um, it was really bad. Uh, one of the... Ab I think it might be one of the worst... End definitely the worst ending to a movie this year. And I, so that comes from a guy who... Yes, I like Terminator Genesis, but I also hated the ending of that movie. Um, so, uh, I, I also... Th this is the worst ending to a movie I've seen in a long time. Um, really bad. Uh, and also just doesn't work with the rest of the movie, despite the fact that the rest of it doesn't work. It doesn't work with the rest of the movie... It doesn't work. Um, so overall, the Fantastic Four does not work. And I can only recommend to you guys out there to go see movies that work. 
that functionally and entertainment-wise work to give you a piece of entertainment, to provide you with an experience, to provide you with something to make you walk out of the movie theater and go, hey, I enjoy my life. Um, you will not walk out of Fantastic Four feeling that way. So I can't recommend it. It's even as a, And also let me just say this, and I think I meant to say this earlier, but I forgot. Um, I know a lot of you guys out there, since I tend to attract people who like Mystery Science Theater, because I do as well, um, love, love me some Mystery Science Theater, so I'm always willing to watch bad movies with the understanding that I'm going to tear them apart. It's not worth it on that level either. For a theater experience, I think maybe this movie might find a cult following after it comes out home release because of just how easy it may or may not be to pick it apart and make fun of it and make jokes. I don't know. I didn't do that in the theater because I was just so dumbfounded by how bad the movie was that I didn't even think to do that. There were one or two moments maybe where I made a joke to my friends. But also, I don't like to talk during a movie anyway in the theater, so um, I find it very rude and annoying. So um, uh, I, I tried not to do that, but for this movie I had to do it a couple times because I was just like, can you believe this shit? <laughs> um, so uh, maybe it'll work on that level in home release, but don't go to the movie theater for that reason. It's not worth it. Um, there's plenty of other movies that, that you can pick from, new and old, that are that you can illegally or legally or any kind of legality download or buy or get um, to provide that kind of experience. So this movie's not worth it on a so, go, so bad it's good or so bad it's fun to make fun of it level either. It's just a complete train wreck and it's not worth seeing. I hope it dies and is forgotten and is buried. Hope they never make a sequel. Been reading a lot of things lately that have scared me on that front because I do not want another one because for I mean like this this is nothing here. Um so I don't need another one. Um And it's not even a matter of needing another one. It's just this is just a fucking horrible piece of shit. Just let it die. Um just let it do badly in, 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 at the box office because it has and it will continue to do worse. And just let it die, bury it, and either do one of two things, Fox. Either give the rights back to Marvel or sit on it for a while until you think you can make something better because, my God. And if I had a choice, oh, yeah, you better believe I want them to send it back to Marvel. I think Marvel would make a kick-ass Fantastic Four movie. Um... The, the, the franchise belongs there. I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's one of my favorite things. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a Marvel f zombie. You know, I'm not a Marvel zombie, as the, as the term used to mean when it was created. Um, and I'm not, a, I'm not a huge 100%, you know, everything they do is amazing fanboy, but I really like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I have a lot of positive feelings towards it. So I really want to see the Fantastic Four put into it, and I really hope that Fox is smart enough to go... We clearly don't know what to do with this franchise. We're not making money on it. All we're doing at this point is holding on to it just for reasons of, you know, well, we can potentially make money on it or we could potentially do something with it, but they haven't done it in four... They had four tries now, including the, the Roger Corman one. So just give it back to Marvel because I'm telling you, man, they'll do something cool with it. And if they don't, it belongs there anyway because then they can use those characters in other movies where they can be used well like, you know, Galactus or Silver Surfer can be used in Guardians or if they ever make Planet Hulk or anything. So just give it back to them for those reasons. I don't think there's any reason for Fox to hang on to it. Also, they're not going to use any of the FF characters in their X-Men movies anyway. Um, I'm not saying I hate Fox because I really like the stuff that X-Men has been doing. I fucking love that Deadpool trailer. Um, I think it's brilliant. I think it's going to be one of my favorite movies of next year because that movie just looks fantastic. It looks exactly like what I, I, I like you what you would want from a Deadpool movie and I'm just happy that Fox is just has the balls to make a movie like that that really impresses me and it makes me happy that we're living in a culture where that kind of movie can get made and will potentially make money I'm happy about that um so I, I'm thrilled at that um but yeah Fantastic Four belongs at Marvel Fox give it back if you don't you're idiots and I hate you nah I don't hate you Planet of the Apes is awesome and I'm sure there are other things that you're producing in the pipeline that I will like as well, maybe. So, with all that out of the way, uh, I think that's going to do it for my review of Fantastic Four, a.k.a. fan Four stick And I'm surprised I didn't make that joke already. Um, because this movie really deserves to be called fan Four stick and not Fantastic Four. So, anyway, so that's going to do it for my re review of Fantastic Four, a.k.a. my attempts to not throw myself down a flight of stairs while talking about it. Um... 
So, uh, I hope you guys got some sense of enjoyment out of this. This movie has just been weighing me down for the past couple days since I saw it. So, I wanted to, uh, to get my thoughts on it out there. I thought it might be therapeutic. And it was. I feel better. So, thank you for indulging me, folks. Uh, so, that's gonna do it for this review. Um, I don't really want to announce anything because I'm gonna be doing a video in the next day or so that is going to be me updating you guys on everything that's gonna be going on on Zazzy Bar or not going on, as we may find out, in the next couple months. So I've got a lot to say on that front, so I'm going to do that as its own separate video, so look out for that. Only thing I'll say is that, since I'm not sure when I'm going to get the chance to record that, since I've got a busy week ahead of me, next week, it'll definitely, I'm, I'm going to get it up before next week, but uh, it'll it'll go up soon. Um, but, uh, let me, I'll just say that, uh, you know, don't, I'm not going to be putting up any more of the podcasts for a while, so just wanted to let you guys know that, so that way you're not looking forward to anything or waiting for anything that I'm not going to be making. So, um, for the next couple weeks, sorry, no podcasts. I'll explain why and for the reasons in that update video I'm going to be doing, um, but... Just uh, no content from me for a while except for appearances on other people's channels. I will be on Geeky Gentleman soon, hopefully. Uh, we're going to be doing a video there that I'm going to be a part of. And Andres and I are recording a review of Batman Arkham Knight tonight. So, eh, rhymes, get it? Ah, uh, it's like the same word twice. Ah, uh, except different spellings. Anyway, um, so you can look it out for me on that as well. But uh, in terms of stuff on my channel... Um, I am not going to be producing anything for a little bit, and I apologize for that. I, uh, I'll i tell you guys why in that video, so look out for that in the coming days. But it, that's it for this review of Fantastic Four and for all of that. So I'll see you guys in that video. Thank you very much for watching, as always. Until next time, I'm Bill Worcester, a.k.a. Zazibar, reminding you to not get drunk and then crack interdimensional travel because, I mean, why would you even do that? It just sounds like a bad idea. Could have fucking killed a lot of people, Reed Richards. Kind of a dick. Well, it's pretty obvious. Anyway, good night, everyone. Thank you.